Electric vehicles are a big and vital player in the global battle to meet ambitious emissions targets. But the industry still has plenty of challenges to reckon with. EV battery technology company Proterra has its sights set on transformation in the commercial vehicle market. And they have a clear vision for what that looks like. I'm Rosanna Lockwood and I'm in Davos where I sat down with Proterra's CEO to find out how. Gareth Joyce, CEO of Proterra. Fantastic to have you with us. Thanks very much for having me here. Let, let, let's get on to talking about Proterra. Um, what, what is Proterra? What are you guys offering to the market? What's the vision? Well, it's, yeah, start with the vision. I mean, we're, we're a company that is, by definition, Proterra, translated to English, is for the earth. Um, so we're, we're mission oriented and every one of our employees really believes in what we're doing. Um, it's about all electric, no emissions for the earth. That's our mission statement and uh, we really believe in it. We're here to make an impact. So how are you doing that? What's, uh, what's the offering? What's the product? We have three uh, product business units inside of our company. First, Proterra Powered uh, is the part of the business where we supply batteries to commercial vehicle manufacturers for the production of battery electric commercial vehicles. Uh, in addition to that, we have a transit business where we manufacture our own transit bus powered by our own battery electric powertrain. Uh, and we have 950 of those on the roads in the U.S. already uh, and North, well, North America, Canada and the U.S. Uh, and then we have an energy business where we supply fleet scale charging solutions for these commercial vehicle operators because you know, without the charging solution, the battery electric commercial vehicles really don't achieve what we need them to achieve. And so yeah, you've got to have the hand in glove to make sure these operators can actually successfully operate these vehicles in an energy efficient way. Well, let's get a sense on how important that is for the real world then. Uh, it's no secret the sudden rise in demand and popularity of electric vehicles for the public, you know, people driving. Uh, their own cars around suddenly want an electric vehicle over a combustion engine typically at the moment, but it, what commercial space is what you're focusing on. You mentioned buses there and things like that. Just how important is it to get those types of vehicles electrified in yeah. order to achieve a more sustainable future? Well, a couple of important points maybe to, to reference. Um, around about 15% of the uh, emissions challenge that we're dealing with comes from the transportation sector. So, so really it gives you a sense of scale of, of how big the opportunity is to electrify uh, products that are driving on the roads, whether passenger car or commercial vehicle or otherwise, you know, in, in agricultural products and other industrial products. Um, add to that the fact that about 70% of the consumer goods that reach the shelves of stores or get into your home through some sort of a delivery service have been on a commercial vehicle at some point in their life, right? So it's really critically important that we find a solution to make sure that goods are delivered to people in an you know, environmentally friendly way. So you know, we, we really have focused on the commercial vehicle market because it drives the economy. It's the backbone of the economy. 5% of the vehicles on the road are sort of heavy duty trucks and buses, yet they contribute about a third of the carbon emissions. So again, why are we laser focused on commercial vehicles? Well, as a young company that's mission oriented, we think that there's an outsized opportunity to contributing towards sustainable solutions by focusing on these commercial vehicle applications. Thinking about electric vehicles in the grand scheme of things, there's a fair amount of appetite out there at the moment for EV cars. Um, you're very much more in the commercial space as we've discussed. Uh, let's talk about the role, the real world role the electric vehicles play in the world, not only as a sort of transition to a sustainable future, which of course is vital and important, but just generally how they kind of um, impact society. The uh, impact that it has on the environment is, is core to our mission, but, but we're, we're seeing better products being built. We're seeing creative engineers finding ways to leverage this new technology platform to come up with better products. So you know, the way I see it is we're making progress, not just you know, towards a better environment, but progress towards better products. Uh, one example, uh, Volta Trucks that we work with here in Europe, um, you know, is, is, is bringing to the market a truck which is ground up engineered for battery electric technology that'll be 
delivering refrigerated groceries into the you know, big urban metros of Europe, the Amsterdams, the Parises, the Londons of the world, um, on a daily basis. It's an incredibly you know, innovative product where the driver experience is fundamentally different to anything that's on the road today. So it's really exciting to see how the engineers are embracing the technology and just finding innovative ways to produce better product for customers. And, and are you doing these phases uh, in parallel with some sustainability targets that have been set at a global level, UN level, country level? A lot of these emissions targets are the sort of 2030 to 2045 kind of uh, age range from here, sort of decade from here. Um, for some people, that feels very far away. From some, for others, it feels absolutely immediate. Where's your industry going to be at this point? How does it fit in with Proterra? You have to uh, uh, sort of understand the life cycle of a commercial vehicle to put those targets in context. I personally feel like that's a realistic, ambitious opportunity for us to get to a point where we've got scaled deployment of battery electric commercial vehicles. Yeah, you know, the typical life of a commercial vehicle is maybe 10 years. So. You know, a company who's just bought a combustion engine commercial vehicle a year ago is going to want to run that for 10 years to get the economic value out of it. So you know, on a 10 year life cycle, then typically fleets are replacing their vehicles at roughly 10% a year. Um, that means it's going to take you 10 years to replace your full fleet. So you know, if you consider that today these vehicles are starting to come to market, whether it's a light commercial vehicle, medium duty, heavy duty, as they come to market, it's going to take until the 2030s to really get high volume of these vehicles deployed, and that's where you see the impact because you obviously have you know, the vast majority of vehicles now being battery electric powered. Well, if one thing we know for sure is that if you want to speed up uh, any kind of transition, you need some sort of public sector buy-in, of course, or at least leading the way, because it helps the private sector, some would argue. Some would argue private sector has led the way in the form of EV and, and innovation. So talk to me a bit about that, because we're here in Davos in Switzerland, where the World Economic Forum takes place annually, world leaders coming together to try and solve global challenges this year cooperation in a fragmented world but ultimately we're talking about public and private sector working hand in hand to speed up transformation so uh, what is your view on that H how have you worked with the public sector the collaboration that has to exist between public and private sector is critical mm -hmm. um, but I would liken it to a yacht tacking towards its destination they're not always moving in a synchronized fashion and therefore you know, progress is made with a little bit of a sort of left tack and then a right tack, but we're moving in the right direction as the public and private sectors sort of try and shift towards the right destination in harmony. Um, we've seen capital formation occur in the private sector. I'm very encouraged by that. We've seen the sense of urgency by corporate leaders. Um, we have the technology solutions. We've, we've shown that. Uh, and I'm very encouraged by what I see in the policy environment as well, uh, if I just reflect, for example, on the Inflation Reduction Act that was recently passed in the U.S., you know, that's a significant piece of legislation that is uh, both promoting motivation on the demand side through incentives that, that you know, encourage the private sector to say, all right, let's lean into this and buy some of these vehicles. Uh, and on the other hand, it's also got supply side incentives that are making sure the investments are made for long-term establishment of capacity and infrastructure and job creation that will create a long-term you know, positive outlook for this industry so that it's really seen as a valuable contributor to life in the future, frankly. Just to end then, so what is the answer to really ensuring total EV adoption? I know it's probably not a very simple question, uh, but is it a combination of this, this public sector help? Is it, uh, talk to me just a little bit about what your sort of ideal next decade could look like. First of all, we need to continue that journey of public private sector collaboration. Uh, but secondly, I, I think we mustn't forget what we're trying to do here. Ultimately, we're trying to make an impact on the environment so that you know, your children, my children uh, of the future, they get to enjoy the earth the way we have. Um, and to do that, we've got to make sure that this circular energy economy starts to gain momentum where the batteries that we're making today are you know, more than 95% recyclable material. We've got to make sure that as those raw materials are extracted to produce cells, to produce packs, that we put into vehicles that are distributed around the world and used, at the end of their life, they've got to come back and get recycled, right? And so we must never lose sight of that because that's what the ultimate game is. I feel 
I feel really proud when I see children getting on the school buses that we provide batteries to Thomas Bolt school buses for. And they literally, as a young five, six, seven year old, they say, I feel good about getting on this bus because it's quiet and I can't see the black smoke coming out the back. That's, that's compelling. It's a child's view of what the future looks like, but it's compelling for us. Gareth Joy, CEO of Proterra. It's been fascinating hearing from you, hearing what the company is doing. Thanks so much for joining us here in Davos, Switzerland. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great.